This worship service was produced in compliance with social distancing guidelines recommended by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Stay safe to learn how to protect yourself, your family, and your community from COVID-19. Go to cdc.gov or call 800-232-4636. Welcome to Easter Sunday Services at Hope United Methodist Church in Southfield, Michigan. The Reverend B. Kevin Small, Senior Pastor. We're so glad you're here. He is risen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kevin Smalls. I am the senior pastor here at Hope United Methodist Church, and I want to join everyone else in welcoming you. We are so excited that you are with us on this Resurrection Sunday. As a matter of fact, won't you take a few moments and just type in, God loves you, so do I, and there's not a thing you can do about it. We love to do what we call pass the peace in this way. And we invite you to do that right now. Why don't you show some love one to another, spread that message around. God loves you, so do I. There's nothing you can do about it. You are loved this day. Take a few seconds to do that. Resurrection Sunday, oh, we come to praise our God who is great. Come on, sing, y'all. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. And the love, love that he shows is unconditional. You know, the power of the power Lord. Of the Lord is unbeatable. I tell you. Great is the God we serve. Come on, sing that again. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. Ah, ah. Love that He shows is unconditional. And He's a power. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God we serve. Yeah. God is great. <laughs> yes, He is. And greatly to be praised. Come on, y'all. God is great and greatly to be praised. Let's sing that verse one more time. You know the great the greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. Inconceivable. The love that He shows is unconditional. There is no limit. The power of the Lord is unbeatable. Great is the God.
not just a good guy. He's a great guy. Come on now. God is great. Ha. And greatly to be praised. Yes. God is great. <laughs> and greatly to be praised. Do you love today? God is great. We gotta go. <laughs> but he is greatly to be praised. Good morning, Hope family. And this is an opportunity for us to go before the throne of grace. Oh, Holy God, we give you thanks this Resurrection Sunday morning. Because God, you got up with all power. And God, we're so excited to be worshiping you today. A day when we get to remember and recall what Sunday morning is really all about. It's about you not allowing death to have the last word. And so God, we give you thanks for your tender mercy, your grace, your love, your compassion, God, because they draw us nearer to you this morning. And so God, we come with a request, God. We come asking God that you would continue to pour your wisdom into our children who are studying at dining room tables and kitchen tables. For our young people who are not able to socialize with their friends the way that they have done traditionally, God, they're having to find new ways to do that. And God, we're asking that you continue to bless the teachers who have sent packets home with children who are communicating via email and through Zoom conferences to Make sure that their students are getting the kind of care they need academically, God. God, continue to um, care for our medical personnel who are on the front lines, God, caring for those affected by the COVID-19 virus, God. We're just asking right now, God, that you continue to cover them, God, that you continue to work with the doctors and the nurses and all the staff that are trying their very best to meet the needs of those who need their help, God. Give them supernatural strength, God, to continue to push forward and help. And God, when their shifts are over, God, would you provide them with your sweet, sweet rest. God, we also ask that you would continue to cover the mature in, in, in age and in faith, God, those who need some attention, God. We're asking that you would just meet them where they are, God. That you would care for those who are homebound now, God. Those who don't have a choice but to be at home. We're just asking that you just pour your love, your grace, your, your care, your spirit, your presence all around them, God. That they would not find themselves alone. That they would know that they are in the presence of the Lord. God, we, we ask that you continue to make a way out of no way for the unemployed, God. Those who are not standing in the unemployment line physically, but they're making the phone call to Marvin, God. We're just asking, God, that you continue to be a way maker, God. We're asking that you continue to remind them that you are the God who provides. God, your word says that you that, that, that the righteous have, you never see the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread, God. And God, we're asking right now that you will continue to provide in ways in which only you can. God, let them not be in lack in this season where we're trying to figure out how to make the ends meet. And God, we know that you are the one who will make a way. God, we're also praying for the greater Detroit area, God, not just the city alone, God, but for all the surrounding cities here in the state of Michigan, God, because there are a great number of people on the front lines trying to care for, protect, and serve, and make sure that we're getting the care that we need, God, and we're just asking, God, that you would pour out your spirit on all flesh in this season, that we would experience your wisdom and your tenderness, your kindness, and your patience in a season where we're being where we're being forced to be still. God, speak to our hearts and let us know that this is a time to rest and find comfort in you. Oh, holy God, we ask that you care for those who have lost loved ones to this virus, God, and the complications that it creates. 
God, give us the courage to seek your face in a season where we're grieving and we don't fully understand. God, just be with us and remind us that this is not a goodbye, but this is a see you later. That we will see our loved ones once again because we have placed our faith in Christ alone. It's not easy, God, to say goodbye to the loved ones, God, but we're trusting you to care for them as you are caring for us, as we are the ones who cry tears. God, help us grieve when we're not able to say our goodbyes in traditional ways, God. We're having to wave goodbye to loved ones in, in, in behind glass doors because we can't physically touch those who have been afflicted by this virus. It's not easy work, God, but we're asking you to help us do the work of being your church in a season where we're having to find new ways to be the disciples you've called us to be. We trust you, we love you, and we know that on this Resurrection Sunday, death does not get the last word. That you get up with all power in your hand, all majesty and glory is yours now and forever. And we give thanks to the one who got up today. We give thanks to Jesus and the people of God said amen. Today's scripture reading is John, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18, the resurrection of Jesus. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, 
They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In times of adversity, it's important to remember that without a cross, there can be no crown. Please welcome Dr. Brandon Wells and members of the Whitfield Project featuring Mr. Dorian Dillard. Sing.
celebration off at the tomb. I, however, like to go back just a little earlier than that. You might recall yourself when Jesus was visiting Simon's house, and he was there with a few other gentlemen, and a woman comes in, Mary Magdalene. She comes in and begins to affectionately service Jesus by preparing his body for burial. The only reason why we know that is because Jesus himself made that clear when the other gentlemen around the room were whispering to each other, why would she waste such expensive ointment by doing this much use of it? She could sell it and give it to the poor. Or some of them were saying, if he knew what kind of woman this was, he wouldn't be participating in such an act. But she was so moved by his presence that she wept when she saw him. She took her hair to dry his feet off from a dusty trip. She poured this ointment on him, showing her how much love she had for him and what he had definitely done for her. And Jesus, Jesus chastises, chastises those, those around, around the room, room saying, saying, don't, don't talk, talk about her in this way. way. None, None of you of have you welcomed me, especially, especially you, Simon, Simon being, being the host. host. You, you have not welcomed me in such a manner. manner. You, did you did not, not kiss me when I arrived. You have not washed our feet. And you, and you know, know that's, that's how we roll when we travel. You've done none of that. But this woman has shown great love. In fact, she is doing a great thing by preparing my body for burial. Now, granted, not many of them might have known exactly what he was talking about. Some of them have heard from time to time him talking about his own death. But if we can fast forward, let's now go to the tomb. When Mary gathers her things to go and do just that, anoint Jesus' body for burial. The problem was, this time, he was not there. The stone was rolled away, and instead of staying a few more moments to take an investigative look at it, she immediately turned back and went and told two disciples, two of the eleven. She said to Peter and John, they have rolled the stone away. And they rushed to the tomb to figure out what was going on. Now, Peter and John were on their way. The text lets us know that John outran Peter and got to the tomb first. And then Peter comes and actually goes in and comes back out. Now, when Peter went in the room, he noticed that the linen had been neatly placed. Now, if this, now, this was, was some, some kind of kind kidnapping, kidnapping nobody, nobody really had time to be neat. neat. To be to neat be is a sign that you're that taking you're your time and you're caring for this in a very, very meticulous way. way. And whoever and unwrapped, unwrapped the body of Jesus, Jesus did it in just, just that fashion, a very meticulous 
way. They took their time doing it. This was no rush job in any way. Peter comes out. John goes in, and John believes what he sees. John believes that perhaps, indeed, this is the resurrection. And they leave Mary crying there. They leave her distraught, and they go back home. Mary is still left at the tomb without any answers. She decides, well, maybe I should go in and see. And unlike John and Peter, when Mary goes in, there are two angels, one at the foot and one at the head. And they're looking at her, wondering why she's crying. And they ask her that. Why are you weeping? Jesus is not here. She doesn't spend any more time having a conversation with them because her main motive is to find out who tampered with the body of Jesus, who took him away. And so she sees a, a gentleman standing over the way, and she goes over to him, suspecting him to be the gardener. She says, uh, please let me know where you have laid him, and I will go and take him away. It's interesting. Many of, of the world's changing events took place in a garden. God first created the garden for Adam and Eve to dwell in and to live in. The garden of Eden, that was their home until they tainted it and contaminated it with a bad choice. In the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is praying and having a one-on-one -on -one with God, asking, if this, this cup, cup can pass, pass may it may be, be so, but if not, I will I still, still do what, what you want me to do. And now, now here, here, in this, this garden, garden, the world changes. changes. In this, this garden, garden, what was, was done in a first garden, garden is restored. What was, what was broken, broken in a first garden, garden is brought back to life in this garden. garden. The garden that, that Mary thought, thought she was talking, talking, talking to, to called her name, Mary. Now, now she, she begins, begins to, to, to hug, hug him, him and, and to embrace, embrace him, him because, because as he as called he her name, she recognizes who he is. And this hug and this, and this embrace, embrace is, is like a welcome hug. hug. It's like it's a welcome back hug. hug. It's like a, I knew you could do it hug. It's like a, I'm glad you did it hug. It's like a, you are, you are the, the one hug who, who redeemed, redeemed the world from its brokenness and from its sin, and, and every, every single, single promise that you made us, you have fulfilled it, kind of hug. And Jesus, Jesus offers theological distancing, distancing not, not social distancing, distancing but theological distancing. distancing. He doesn't, he doesn't have time, time to explain it in this moment. He doesn't, he doesn't have time, time to let her know, I'm not, not who you thought I was. was. He, doesn't he doesn't have time, time to let her know, this doesn't, doesn't mean that things are going on is normal. normal. He, doesn't he doesn't have time to let her know that, that you all will actually have to pick up the pace from here and carry the gospel throughout the entire world. He doesn't have time to let her know the one you're clinging to, the one you think you're holding on to is not he. I am no longer just Jesus, but I have become the Christ. I am Jesus the Christ. Go back and let the others know that I will be ascending to my Father. It's interesting that she had to go through all of this by herself. No one else was there. Peter and John couldn't wait around. They missed all of this action. And just to think that she went there for one purpose, and that was to prepare his body. But she, but she had she forgotten, forgotten that, she that she really, really doesn't, doesn't have, have to do that, that today because she, she did it back in Simon's house. house. Jesus' body, body was prepared a while ago by her act, act of faith and her, and her act, act of contribution, contribution and sacrifice. And so, and so everything, everything she did is coming to full circle, circle right now. now. This, this becomes, becomes her story. story. If you read this carefully, what this means is she becomes the very first person in the entire world to see the risen Christ. 
I have a friend of mine, uh, the Reverend Dr. Vance P. Ross, who, who when he's telling us about an event that's unbelievable, he would often say, look, this is nothing somebody told me. I was in the room. And Mary gets to say that same thing today. This isn't something somebody told me. She goes back to the disciples. And instead of a question, she goes back with a statement. And instead of uncertainty, she goes back with conviction. For these four words, I have seen the Lord. Now, from time to time, people will question what you have seen. People will question what you have gone through. In fact, there will be some people who will never believe what you have gone through. They will never accept your story. They will never accept your journey. It will never have credibility for them. And you don't ever have to worry about it because you must be assured of your own story and your own conviction and your own instance when you have seen the Lord. It may not be the way you want it. It may not be how you've imagined it. But the Lord, if you will let him, will show up and reveal himself to you every single time. I tell you, this is the receipt of our Easter experience. The crucifixion was the payment, but the resurrection is the receipt. And now, because of that receipt, you have the power to say this right here? This is my story. This is my song. And I will praise my Savior all the day long. May God bless you as a powerful and amazing Easter creation and him who is the Christ. Hey, we come now to the end of our time together on this marvelous Easter Sunday. We don't want to leave too quickly though. We want to make sure that you have this relationship in Jesus Christ, for that is the most important relationship you could ever cultivate. If you do not, we invite you to say the following prayer. Lord, I receive you in my heart and in my soul. I turn my entire life over to you. All that I am, I am yours and you are mine. And I consider myself to be your child and a resurrected being. If you say that and confess your sins, have a little talk with Jesus. We will consider you to be saved, and we thank you for taking the time to enrich your own space and your own journey with such a choice. Also, if you have any questions or you would like to become a member of our community of faith here at Hope United Methodist Church, I invite you to email me, RevKSmalls, at HopeUMC.org, and we'll be sure to take care of you in a timely fashion. Thank you so much. Again, we now come to that time where we raise our offering, and we invite you to present your offerings how the Lord places it upon your heart. Any way you can offer to support this ministry and the word that goes forth, we would certainly appreciate that. And now, my friends, may the light of God surround you. May the love of God unfold you. May the power of God protect you. May the presence of God watch over you wherever you go, whatever you do. May you always know that God is there and you are not alone. May you forever be under the sweet influences of his Holy Spirit. For as of this day, you, me, we are Easter people. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, go forth in peace and serve the world.